Hi, Mike Snyder here with you. It's a pleasure to be here with you for the Hogstrite Symposium. I'm going to be talking today about We've Got Your Back and Neck. It's a topic on ergonomics, which is very near and dear to me. And I like to call this particular talk the ergonomic seating and feeding utensils for ophthalmic surgeons. So let's jump right in. Why should I care about ergonomics? What's the difference? Well, the problem is you, the surgeon. Stiff neck, anybody in the audience? I'm pretty sure there's at least a few people in the stiff neck uh, territory here. Because if we look at, uh, um, here's just an image pulled right off the internet of an ophthalmic surgeon sitting at the microscope. And I want to point out a couple things. First, look at the position of the spine there. Does that look ergonomic? Does that look smart? I'm not so sure that that's the best thing for us. And notice how much support the back of this chair is providing. The back of the surgeon's uh, back is not even near the chair. And this is quite a significant issue. Now, there may be some of you who like going to the spa, and it might be a good excuse for the spa, but I'm not thinking so. I think it's an occupational hazard for ophthalmologists, and the data supports that. If you look at C-spine disease among ophthalmologists, we have 54% of respondents in a UK study with significant back pain. They're not the only ones. In a group of uh, American ophthalmologists, 52% reported neck, upper body, lower back pain. 15% had to limit their work as a result of this. And if we go to the other parts of the world, we see that from a survey of vitreoretinal surgeons, 55%, it's not just anterior segments, not just posterior segment, 7% of ophthalmologists, just a little under one in 10, required surgery. Eek, who wants to do that? So I was giving this talk, uh, practicing one time on an airplane on the way to one of the meetings, and my seatmate had been looking over my shoulder and said, what is this all about? And I said, well, I explained a little bit of the couple slides. And they said, oh, so it's like black lung disease for coal miners and ophthalmologists. Yeah, actually it is. And that's important for us to keep in mind. Also, we should talk about our facile surgical maneuvers. When we talk about joint sensitivity, the most sensitive point of a joint's function is in its mid-range of motion. When we look at this picture again, we notice that the forearms are flat to the floor. If you'll notice here that when your forearms are flat to the floor, if we flex, we can flex about 90%, but our extension is fairly limited. If on the other hand, we change our positioning so that our arms are more up and down, more vertical to the floor, our flexion and our extension are each about 50% and we're working in that midpoint of rotation. S similarly, when we turn our hand inward and outward, our intorsion and our extorsion, we're right in that midpoint when our hands are more upwards and our elbows are more down by our body sides. So our ergonomics should consider this as well. So is it inevitable that if we don't do these things, are we doomed to have back pain? I don't think so. What can be done? Anything? Let's look. One thing is to look at seating utensils. I like to call these the fancy word for a chair. And our chair should look at lumbar support. That's one of the most important areas that we have. We should have adjustability. And take a look at this chair here. We've designed this new surgical chair designed for core support. And we have the lumbar support in the middle of the cushion right here that is really quite comfortable. And it follows the lardosis of the back. Now, let me demonstrate it. This is my partner, Dr. Katana, sitting in this chair while doing surgery. And notice how upright his spine is in comparison to that initial image that you saw that we pulled off the net, right? The spine is completely upright. And I also want to call your attention over to the side here. And look at how well his lumbar lordosis is supported by this chair. Now, this is me in this image. And you'll notice that we made the back of the chair narrow enough that we won't contaminate the elbows so that we have full range of motion of our elbow and shoulder girdle without contaminating the back of the elbows from our sterile gowns as well. Notice that my spine is also able to be upright here in this chair. And so it works for multiple surgeons in multiple settings. The height is adjustable. I believe that these are actually Dr. McKee's feet, if I'm correct. And you can see the chair comes up and down with pedal control. It's really quite easy to manipulate. And in fact, not only is it adjustable, but there's a graded adjustability. So your team can adjust it to a particular number for you. And I think that that's actually pretty cool when we're adjusting for height. As it turns out, 
you might have noticed that there's these very colorful socks. And I asked Dr. McKee if these were his socks. He said, no, it's one of his technicians. At least he said that. Um, but uh, that height adjustability is really quite nice. Also notice that the, the little tootsies on uh, the toes here are also protected one at another. So uh, maybe it is Dr. McKee's feet, maybe it's his technician, but I think that's pretty cool nonetheless. Now, as it turns out, we're not all built the same. And some of our lumbar lordosis is a little higher or lower than others. Again, we have adjustability for that. And we also have a scale so that we can say uh, for our technicians, yes, I'm a two and a half. So please have the scale set at two and a half for my adjusted height, maybe six for my adjusted uh, um, lumbar height. So we have all of these things to fit ourselves to our surgical chair. Similarly, some of us sit a little further back in the chair, some of us sit a little further forward, and notice that we can also use the uh, pre-set uh, measurements for this as well. Uh, this actually chair is available through Hogstrite at coresurgicalchair.com and should be uh, hitting the shelf shortly. So what else can I do to help myself as far as my neck and back? Well, one thing that I learned many years ago is to tilt the microscope. And I learned this from Bruce Wallace, and I, I thank him every day that I'm in the operating room. This is a slide that I took years ago. Notice that we've got the patient's head turned off to the side about 30 degrees. And this is an old rigid style microscope, which we have tilted at about 30 degrees. It's important for our red reflex to be coaxial with the microscope and to the eye, but it doesn't need to follow gravity for us, at least uh, not for us in the anterior segment. So notice that my spine is able to be upright. This is actually a picture of me. You can see that it's an old picture because I've got dark hair back here. Um, but I want to let you know that I still sit at the same tilt even with my current gray hair. And the ergonomics are equally as good, if not better, with now our more adjustable microscopes. Now, even for surgeons who like sitting at the head of the bed, the retinal surgeons need to do that. Uh, one of the things that we can now do is use a surgical microscope that has an adequate amount of horizontal optical path so that we can sit upright. This is Dr. McKee again in this image, and look at how supported his spine is and how upright he is. This is a guy who's going to have a very long and obviously brilliant surgical career, and that's in part due to this uh, really nice, long, horizontal light path of the Hogstripe uh, microscope. Now, some people talk about the 3D monitors and the benefits of that. There might be some benefit from disconnecting the microscope from the surgeon, but all of our current microscopes still get in the way of view. And in order to see the screen, the surgeon has to kind of shift off to the side. And that does not look overly ergonomic to me. How about pedals? What do we do with our pedals and our feet? This has always been a little bit of a mystery to me. So we're going to move from the seat to the feet. And most of these pedals sit flat on the floor. Well, that's definitely not at the mid-range of our ankle joint. This is the pedals of a car. And you can tell that none of the pedals to any of our cars are on the carpeting, are they? Does anybody have a car like that? I don't think so. They're designed ergonomically so that we can work our ankle in the best position of its range of motion. So what can we do? We can tilt the foot pedals. And we've created uh, some foot pedal elevators. This is actually the first iteration of foot pedal elevator that we tried. Makes a huge difference in comfort in the operating room, as well as the sensitivity of the ankle joint as we're actuating both the microscope pedals and our FACO pedals. There is an adjustability factor. This is the second iteration. And now we have a third iteration, which is even more adjustable and a little sleeker in look. You can see that uh, positioned with the uh, surgical core chair. And when we put all of this together with the surgical microscope with the longer light path chair and the pedals, it really gives us a very ergonomic workstation in the operating room, making our days more comfortable, allowing us to do a better job for our patients and uh, potentially even extending our surgical careers. <laughs> but we shouldn't forget about the clinic. One of my partners came to me a couple of months ago and he said, you know, Mike, I've been having some neck and back problems and I know that you're really into this ergonomic stuff. Can you help me out? So the first thing I did is I said, okay, let me go see you examine a patient. I'm just going to stand like a fly in the room and uh, you just go ahead and examine a patient. And this is that picture. I want to call your attention to his back and how far away he is from the back of his chair here in the clinic. 
So when we zoom in a little bit, you can see that he's looking straight through <coughs> oculars, which are horizontal to the floor. But if we can disjoint that a little bit, elevate it and create a tilt, that can change the position of his neck entirely. Now in these two positions, one with the tilted oculars and one with the, the non-tilted oculars, you can see that he's in a much better ergonomic position in the slide on the right. And these are now available for the slit lamps uh, with this tilted ocular, makes a huge difference for lots of folks. And you'll also notice that the back is much closer and less curved, providing again, a more ergonomic positioning. The other thing that we can do is get closer to the patient at the slit lamp so that we're not leaning forward. <clears throat> Many chairs have a footrest that prevents the chair from uh, gliding closer to the examining chair. If we flip that up while we're examining the patient, we can get six or eight inches closer, and this can also make a significant difference in our comfort and ergonomics. Or we can raise the chair a little bit higher and slide underneath it. So what can you do? Well, pay attention to your ergonomics. Tilt the microscope. Adjust the patient height to your preferred position in the clinic and the operating room, rather than adjusting your neck to the patient's position. Consider a better chair in the clinic and in the operating room. Adjust your hand and foot positions to maximize joint sensitivity. Consider foot pedal elevators and angled oculars. Thanks so much for your attention.